Hi, I'm James from QSC, and I want to introduce you to some of the latest features and innovations in QSys Designer 9.3. Firstly, we've added the new NC range of native QSys cameras. This includes an update to our PTZ range with upgraded optics, 4K sensors, and a wider field of view on one of the cameras. But it also includes the NC110, which is our first fixed lens EPTZ camera that still features all the same video features you know from QSYS cameras. Let's take a look at how to use these inside QSYS Designer. Here I am in QSYS Designer, and you can see here that I've got a couple of components from the new NC range of cameras. Now, if we open these up, I've got the 12X80 and also the NC110, you'll see that these look very similar to the current PTZ range, which is, of course, intentional. It means that you can use the controls you have in your existing designs and remap them to these new cameras really, really easily. Now, one small addition you'll see on this page is that we now have the ability to pan and tilt diagonally as well as horizontally and vertically, which is a small addition that's great for broadcast scenarios or applications where you're using the cameras in live events. Also, if we go over to the imaging tab, on the 12x80 or the 20 by 60, you'll see that we have some new options for the HDMI and SDI output. Firstly, in HDMI mode, you can now get a 4K 30 frames per second output. And also in SDI, you can change the SDI level between A and B, which just increases compatibility between the cameras and some production switches. Next is MediaCast, which replaces our existing camera streaming technology with an all new interoperable format that reduces bandwidth, reduces latency, but improves quality. It also sets the stage for some all new video features that we've got coming in the near future. Let's take a look at the new MediaCast router in QSYS Designer. I'll add this from the schematic elements section and drag it in here. We'll just hook up my cameras and wire the output of the router to this USB video bridge. Now, so far, this is very similar to what we've seen before with our camera router. So why the change in name? Well, MediaCast is the name for a new video technology in QSYS, which will enable lots of new video features in the future, but has been applied to our entire range of cameras in 9.3. One of the first improvements you're going to see is that the quality of the output of the cameras over the network has increased. And that's because we've changed the codec across all the cameras from Motion JPEG to H.264. This means you're gonna get lower latency, we're gonna get higher quality, and we're gonna get lower bandwidth on the network. Another key change we've made is that the video scaling is now done at the USB video bridge. This means that your PC, when it's connected to the bridge, can now ask for a very wide range of resolutions and the video bridge will scale it locally rather than the cameras outputting multiple different resolution streams as happened previously. If I look at a camera that's connected to a real system and go over to the new MediaCast Streams tab, we can now see that we have a multicast address for the MediaCast stream that's used for USB video bridging. But I can also enable a second stream called the preview stream. And as soon as I do that, I'm going to get a URL that I could use to decode this on any device. Next is QSYS Control. We've added more UCI controller features, and we've added some improvements to the Asset Manager, which just gives you improved filtering and searching capabilities. But my favorite new feature is the new Lua scripting editor inside QSYS Designer, which is based on VS Code, and it makes scripting and changing existing scripts easier than ever. Let me show you. Here I am in the brand new Lua editor in QSYS Designer. Now, what I want to do is print out what's in this list. So I'm going to create a function to do that. Now here, as soon as I type function, I get the new function prediction. It's now given me the body of a function with the name, the option to add arguments, and it's also put the end at the end, which is very helpful. Now I want to run a for loop inside this function. And again, as soon as I start to type for, I get the option to add a for loop, and it puts in the whole body of the for loop for me. Now I want to iterate over the list variable. So I just type L and it knows that I want to use list. And now I want to print the key and the value variables, which again, it predicts for me very helpfully. Now I want to run this function whenever I press a certain control. So if I just type the word controls, you see I get a list of all the controls in my text controller. And if I choose one, I then get a list of every property on that control. And I want to use the event handler property and assign a function to that. 
And inside this function, all I actually want to do is call the function that we made earlier. And again, I just start typing its name, print sources, and it auto completes the rest of the name for me. Quite often in programming, we're going to want to change the name of a variable after we've made it. And now instead of using find and replace, I can just right click and change all occurrences. When I do that, I type the new name and it will complete that for me everywhere else where that variable occurs. And I'm going to do that with the list variable and also with the value variable inside the for loop. The VS Code editor will also do auto completion for a bunch of QSys extensions to the Lua environment. For example, TCP socket. Here I've created a TCP socket and I want to assign all of the discrete event handlers to that socket. Now this can be time consuming, but in the new editor, I can do that with one click. Last but not least, we also have some updates to Enterprise Manager and Core Manager to help you keep track of your QSys state. There's also some updates to the audio side with improved integration with Dante Domain Manager and domain-based calling for QSys soft phones. But as ever, remember to check out the release notes for a full list of all new features and updates. That's it from me. Thanks for listening and see you next time.